Maria Bonotto. Matia Volker. Now, that was a, uh, an interesting qualifying. We thought it was going to be wet, then it was very, very much dry. And uh, we thought we were definitely on for a 1-2, and the Mercedes came in there and uh, snuck it in. What's your take on it all? It has been a difficult quality, no doubt. The city was difficult because track conditions were changing continuously. Compared to yesterday, P2 track conditions, the track was 20 degrees cooler, more or less. Quite a different track compared to yesterday. Uh, and, and the drivers have to adapt, have to adapt, try to understand the car, try to pick up the right balance and uh, get the confidence with it. So, if I look at uh, what we achieved, still, the second and third is great, we cannot blame, uh, especially knowing that the Red Bull is on the back, 10s and 11s. But I uh, see we got the potential to do more today, so uh, if I look at the ideal lap time, the best sectors are all the one of Carlos, sector one, two and three, the best one are Carlos, so it was a matter of putting the lap together, but uh, it was not obvious today as well. And I think that most of the drivers didn't do they did the perfect lap, so why uh, George did it? So, But having said that, second and third, I'm looking forward to the race, much to come, and um, optimistic as well. Now, it's been a bit of an interesting one. We've obviously been strong uh, since yesterday. We had the pace. Red Bull saying they were hoping for rain in Quali because they think we just can't match the pace of Ferrari. Mercedes never really came too much into that conversation. So for the race, do you think that George has got a really big target on his back and it will be a, a straightforward affair for us? Uh, I think as well as that, if the, if the race today or the quality today, or the weather would have been as, as hot as yesterday, it would have been a different picture. So the fact that it was cooler changed completely the balance between the teams. I think the ones that were suffering more, let me see, have a great today with cooler conditions. Also, I'm more brief and I could so uh, it. So that, that was the case, but tomorrow it will be another day, it will be sunny. It will not be as hot as yesterday, but certainly a different, a different challenge. And uh, I know that our drivers will put it all together, being aggressive at the start, and then hoping for the United States. We certainly hope so. Now, let's have a summary from you about halfway through the season. We're about to go into the summer break. In summary, what do you think of the, of the first half of that season and, and what are you looking forward to most and what's the target for the second second part? Well, I think we need to split it. If you look at um, how much we are competitive, we can be very happy because we are being the race one, we are being the race three. Showing that we got day to day the best car, after that, you know, all the other competitors and teams are pushing very hard on the block. And so, knowing that the car has maintained the lead in terms of performance, even if it's very tight, it, it's great because it's showing that the team is doing a good job. And uh, overall, I think we've got today certainly a good chance always to go to the track and try, and try to win. So, I think that's, that's very much positive. If you look at the number of victories, Certainly, it's not reflecting our, our true potential. So, there are at least four or five races that we could have won and we didn't for whatever other reasons. Some that were leading, we had an issue or another. And, uh, and today, we, instead of four victories, it could have been nine. It would have been a completely different picture. But, but what's more important, I think, is, is the potential because I also prefer, prefer having the potential and some stage to show sure every, everything will come together. Um, what's the switching off for you look like uh, as, as a team but, uh, during the uh, during the break that's coming up? Or what does it look like for you personally? Uh, I think the entire team is very tired right now. It has been a, a long mid season with a lot of races back to back. You can see the drivers, you can see the mechanics, the engineers. We are all tired. So I think what what for us during the summer break it's two weeks. It's not much. But it has, to be, it has to be two weeks where we are all relaxing, where we are resting, because energy will be required to face the, the second half of the season where we got uh, nine races. It will be overseas, not in Europe, not most of them. It will be a lot of traveling, it will be a lot of jet lag, and still very, very intense. So I think it's resting will be key to, to start and then uh, facing the, the second half. You said nine races to go, and we start then looking towards a 2023 season, but of course we have to look much 
earlier than that to the 2023 car. When does development start to switch, or has it started to switch, and when does it really make a make a, a 2023 uh, sort of direction? It's, it's not a matter of switch. I think in terms of design, it started already early this season. In terms of development as well, since the beginning of the season, we are uh, testing already for the for the 2023. So. It's how much, how many people are dedicated, the resources are dedicated, and the full switch will, will may happen after the summer break, not much after. But still, there is a lot of people which are already dedicated, fully dedicated to the 2023. Now, cost cap. We've talked about this before. It's, it's come up over the last few weeks, and quite a lot of the teams are echoing that it's, it's going to be very, very tight. Do you think that that's going to uh, to show its head after the summer break? We're going to start to see that affect teams' performance. I don't, I don't think so. I think we all organize ourselves to, to manage the, the, the budget we got available and I think that has been a sort of tool in many different stuff. So it's not that you're spending whatever you can at the start and then you're stopping spending. So, so we've got programs and plans and uh, you, you need to cope with them. And, um, and I think as well as we said before, at some stage we start developing that gap and we need to, to move on on the next year. Gap. So I don't think it will affect the, the balance of performance on the, the, the set of health. But certainly budget cap is a, a difficult task that needs to be managed and managed in the best way. And final question, tomorrow the Grand Prix, well it might be wet, it might be dry, it's sort of been changing throughout the, uh, the, the weekend. Do you, obviously we're hoping for a one-two, but is there a clear strategy that you're working on between now and tomorrow for that race or do we think that uh, we've got to wait and see what the weather will do? No, we believe it will be dry as first. Uh, looking at yesterday when we tried, I think it's, it will not be a single stop. We believe it will be more than one stop tomorrow. And then it's a matter of picking up the right tires. So as the hard, the medium, or the soft, they are quite different in the way they behave. The hard is quite resilient, but not fast enough. Let me say the soft maybe is faster, but it's not, in terms of where it's not lasting. So I think it's really managed to, to pick up the right tires, have the right strategy, and the number of pistols, which is the problem. I know that we're all hoping for that one-two to lead into the uh, the summer break. So, ladies and gentlemen, a please a big round of applause.